Hey, this is Mike from Hairball Audio, and we're going to show you how to calibrate your FAT500 um, using only a decent digital multimeter, or DMM, and a digital, uh, digital audio workstation, a DAW. Um, we're going to do this inside the lunchbox. Here at Hairball Audio, we have a fancy test setup. We have a 500 series jig. Um, so calibrating these units is pretty easy for us. It always goes well. Um, this is kind of the guide for those of you that don't have all that equipment. Um, the stuff we're going to use today, you should have in your studio. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is just talk about digital multimeters a little bit. Um, they suffer from a few drawbacks. They don't have, a, they don't have as high a refresh rate at uh, high, uh, high frequencies of AC. Um, but generally they're good and they're good enough for what we're going to do. Um, we're going to use a Fluke uh, 87.5 today. This is a pretty expensive meter. Um, probably something you may not have lying around, but it's, it's a pretty accurate uh, meter. Um, I highly suggest if you're at all serious about DIY audio or you uh, run, a, run a recording studio that you should have a decent multimeter. The Fluke 115s, 116, 117 series. Uh, they'll read up to 1K with 2% accuracy, which is pretty good for what we want to do today. We're going to be dealing with a one kilo, with one kilohertz signals. So you want to check your, uh, whatever your multimeter is, you want to check its um, spec sheet and make sure that it can read up to a K. Um, or it can read up to a K with a certain amount of accuracies. Most digital multimeters over $50 will do that. Um, the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to monitor the output of uh, coming out of our lunchbox um, while having a cable plugged into it. Uh, we want to load the circuit, we want to test it under load. So with the output XLR plugged in, we also want to monitor what that output is with our digital multimeter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our output XLR here and we're just going to take the, take the covering off and then just pull it back. So now we can plug this into our output XLR and then we can clip our digital, multi -leader, digital multimeter leads to pin 2 and pin 3 of the output. They're the two outputs that carry signal. Um, we're never going to test either pin or pin 3 against ground or pin 1. We're always going to clip our multimeter leads onto pin 2 and pin 3. And it doesn't matter which lead goes on which um, connector. All right, so here's our setup. Uh, we have a 500 series rack here. I removed all the uh, modules to the right and I put it in the far left so that I can reach in and do some calibration. You probably don't need to remove all the modules, but for, for display purposes here I have. Um, we have the unit powered on. It's been warming up for about 20 minutes. Uh, I have the, our digital multimeter attached to pin 2 and 3 of the output XLR so we can monitor the voltage. Um, and then I've opened up a Pro Tools session. Uh, opened up a track. I've inserted this as an insert. I've activated that insert and, I'm, and I've used the uh, the signal generator that comes to Pro Tools and I'm sending approximately a 0 dB 1K signal. Uh, we often quote 0 dB 1K signal in our calibration. The level of the signal isn't actually crucial. We just need to make sure that we're sending a good line-ish level signal, something that the unit's used to seeing. Um, Pro Tools, the signal generator uses DBS full scale, um, DB full scale. We're going to use DBU, which there's no mathematical way to calculate those. It's really dependent upon your interface. Uh, earlier, I took apart, uh, I, I, I plugged the input into my unit, and I took the uh, covering off like, like I showed you with the output, and I measured uh, it with my DMM, and I adjusted the Pro Tools signal generator so that I saw 0.775 volts AC on my digital multimeter. That's equal to zero dBU. Um, I ended up at around roughly negative 18 on the signal generator. So my signal generator is set up for negative 18 full scale um, at 1K, which is equal to about zero dBU. Uh, so let's get started with our first adjustment. The first... What I'm going to do is start by going over your control knobs. For all of for the purpose of all of these calibration steps, you should never have the true bypass set on. Never have that on, obviously, because then you're bypassing the unit, so how do you calibrate it? We will use gain reduction off a fair bit. We're actually going to start in gain reduction off mode. Our ratio selector is always going to be to 20 to 1. Our release is always going to be fully clockwise. 
Our attack is always going to be fully clockwise. And we're always going to start with our in and out midway. Let's start with the most important calibration step of all, and that's the Q bias adjustment. The Q bias really controls how your compressor works. Don't try plugging in your compressor and using it until you've adjusted the Q bias. Your compressor probably won't work correctly until the Q bias has been adjusted. The Q bias sets the gain reduction FET just slightly into conduction. Think about it like a trap door. The trap door is our gain reduction, and the gate voltage is the hinge. If we have this hinge secured too tightly, the side chain will never be able to act to pull down any gain reduction. If it's set too loosely, we'll always just be dumping a ton of, ton of signal to ground. So what we want to do with the Q bias adjustment is set this hinge so the, the trap door is just slightly open and the side chain can easily pull it in and out. That's really what we're doing and it's a really important step. To start, we want to start with our controls as described earlier. We're in gain reduction off mode. We're at 20 to 1. Attack and release are fully clockwise and your input and your output are set midway. The first thing we need to do to pre prepare for this adjustment is make sure the FET is fully in pinch off mode. This means rotating your Q bias adjustment clockwise until you have a maximum voltage on your AC meter that no longer moves up. Our Q bias adjustment is located in between the attack and release pot accessible through the front panel bracket. All right, I've rotated the uh, Q bias uh, counterclockwise until it uh, increased to the maximum voltage uh, it can get to. So now that we've got the FET fully pinched off, meaning it's closed shut, we're going to slowly rotate it clockwise to the point where it just starts to open up or drops by 1 dB. Uh, let's start by adjusting the output control to read plus 11 dBU or 2.75 volts AC. That should be close enough. Now, we're going to our, insert our screw, uh, our small screwdriver, into the Q bias adjustment, and we're going to slowly rotate this until we get a drop of 1 dB. That means it will drop from plus 10 to plus 11 D, or plus 11 to plus 10 dBU. That's a drop of from 0.275 to 0.45. Let's do this slowly. When the drop happens, it'll happen quickly. And you'll have to slowly dial it in so it's perfect. There we go. We now have a drop of 1 dBU and the Q bias is set. From moving, here, from moving here forward, we never have to touch the Q bias adjustment again. Let's move forward and start calibrating the meters. Our next calibration step will be calibrating the VU meter that sits at the bottom of the large LED string. It has two functions. It displays output uh, in plus 4 metering, like the original units, but it also has a plus 16 dBU peak meter. Let's start by adjusting the peak meter. To do that, we need to set our out with our controls as they were previously, gain reduction off, 20 to 1, attack and release fully clockwise, uh, input and output set to middle. Let's set the output for plus 16 dBU. That's, that equates to 4.88 volts AC. There we go. We've got that pretty close. Now we're going to go into our meter board here. There are two flat trimmers. The one furthest from the back is called gain trim. That's what we'll be trimming here. I'm going to put our screwdriver in. We can rotate it so it's fully... I'm just going to re rotate it so it's fully turned uh, at a right rotation. And the peak light is off. 
now we're going to fully, now we're going to slowly rotate it left just until the point where that peak light, that top red light, just starts to illuminate. There it goes. The peak light is now set to go off at plus 16 dBU, which is about where your uh, ADD converter is going to clip if you're using a digital system. Uh, the next adjustment we have to do is adjust the actual VU me meter. It, 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 it's set to display 0 dB as, uh, uh, it's set to display plus 4 dBU as 0 dB. Um, these meters are best calibrated, uh, the, DB, DB, uh, the uh, VU meter is best calibrated at a low level. We're going to actually calibrate it at negative uh, 10, which is the second um, LED. Uh, if we calibrate it really low, as, as it moves up, it'll, it'll be very accurate. If we calibrated it at, say, if we sent it up, up a plus 4 dBU signal and calibrated the zero, it would lose a lot of accuracy. So we're going to calibrate the, uh, the negative 10 um, light, which, since it's plus 4 metering, that's actually negative 10 D, or negative 6 dBU. So negative 6 dBU is 0 .3, 0 0.388 volts AC. So adjust your output control to read 0.388 volts AC. You see it's super sensitive, so I'm just going to crank the input back a little bit, and now I can adjust the output with a little higher resolution. So there's there's three, 386 millivolts, which is 0.388 volts. Um, that's about where we want to be. So now I'm going to go in. I'm going to adjust the other trimmer on the meter board, the one that's uh, labeled uh, VU, VU trim. It's VR number two. And we're going to adjust it. So the second LED on the string, the second LED on the string just lights. So I'm rolling it to the right. And you can see that the second LED has just started to light. So now we're set for uh, we're set for the VU meter. It's all calibrated. There's no need now to calibrate either of the two um, trimmers that are located on the meter PCB. Let's move to the final step. Our last step is going to be to calibrate the gain reduction meter. Basically, what we want to do here is that if we have, say, we're, we're, we're reducing the gain by negative 6, that that's what it shows on the meter. So the first thing we'll do is, with in, in gain reduction off mode, let's just zero the meter. Zeroing the meter means this first green LED from the top. So the zero adjust is up here, rear mounted on the board. I'm going to turn it clockwise till that first green LED lights up. Now what we're going to want to do is start the calibration process. To do that, we're going to come, this is the first time we're going to come out of gain reduction off mode. We're still at 20 to 1 ratio. We still have our attack and release fully clockwise so that they don't interfere with any latency. And we have our input and output midway. We're going to adjust our output so that it reads 0 dBU on our meter which is equivalent to 0.775 volts AC, or 775 millivolts. All right, so now we have 0 dBU in our output in uh, gain reduction mode. So now we're going to switch to gain reduction off mode, and we're going to adjust now our input. Without touching the output, we're going to adjust our input to read plus 9 dBU, which is 2.18 volts AC. If you've ever uh, calibrated one of our rack units, you know we always use plus 10. Well, uh, the simple reason is our, VU, our uh, analog view meter has a plus 10 clearly labeled. Um, this meter happens to have a plus 9 due to scaling clearly metered. So we're going to adjust a plus 9 dBU and that's 2.18 and we're going to use the input control there we go now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to gain reduction off mode 
or gain reduction on mode, sorry, and make sure we're still at roughly, and we are, we're still roughly at zero, that's a perfect zero dBU. We go back into gain reduction off mode, and we're basically at a perfect plus nine. So what's happening here? When we're in bypass mode, we've got nine dBU on the output. When we're in gain reduction mode, when we're gain reducing, we have zero dB in the output. So we're, we're, we're redu reducing our output when we're in compression mode by uh, negative nine. So let's go ahead and get the meter to show that. So we'll start in, um, we'll start in gain reduction off mode. We've got our zero. Now we're gonna go into gain reduction mode and we wanna reach in through the main PCB or through the meter PCB, there's a hole called tracking adjust. And we're gonna, with the tracking adjust there, we're gonna find the trimmer that's on the main board. I've got it now. And we're gonna adjust this trimmer just until this first yellow LED. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm going clockwise. I'm gonna adjust it until this first yellow LED lights. So now the first LED is lit, which looking at my front panel, I know is uh, uh, 9 dBU of gain reduction. So now we're going to go back into gain reduction off mode, and you can go ahead and you can adjust the output trimmer so that it reads zero. You may have, this is similar to the first step in which we set the input and output. You may have to go back and forth a couple times to get it perfect. Same with this. When you switch back and forth between on and off, you may have to go back and forth a few times to get it perfect. Um, but this seems to be working fine. So now we've got our gain reduction meter displaying perfectly. And please remember that you do have to have the meter board on to complete this step. I know it would be easier if you could pull it off, um, but the meter board does have, uh, uh, does generate the negative rail, so it needs to be on there. Uh, and that's it, it's pretty simple. This unit um, is now fully calibrated 